Welcome to Rising Parent, your go-to podcast for navigating the social waters of childhood. I'm your host, Edna, and I'm here to help you and your little one build lasting friendships and conquer social anxiety. In this episode, we're diving deep into the world of social skills and exploring practical strategies to help your child make friends with ease. From role-playing to building confidence, we've got you covered. So grab your favorite beverage and get ready to unlock your child's social potential. Let's dive in. Okay, so parents out there, listen up, because uh, this one goes out to you, especially if you've got those little ones, those preschoolers, you know, to keep you on your toes. All those uh, finger painting adventures and snack time negotiations. Oh, tell me about it. And just when you think you've mastered the art of the sippy cup. Yeah. Bam, new challenges pop up, like little friendship dramas. Yeah, because even at that age, friendships, they're a big deal. Huge. And we're not just talking about who shares their toys nicely. We're talking about building those foundational social skills, you know, the kind that'll stick with them way beyond those playground days. And that's what we're diving into today in this deep dive, giving you the inside scoop on how to help your little ones make those all important connections and really thrive in those social settings. We've got some awesome resources lined up, too, to guide us along the way. First up, we've got Kids Who Need a Little Help to Make Friends from the Child Mind Institute. They always have such practical advice. Absolutely. It's like having a cheat sheet for navigating those playground politics. Right. And for a fun little bonus, we'll be weaving in insights from Teaching Your Preschooler the Importance of Friendship. It's this super cute and informative video from McFinn, Explore Kindness. I love how they use those adorable characters to illustrate those sometimes tricky social situations totally and you know what else i appreciate about both of these sources they totally get it they understand that parents can't exactly step in and create friendships for their kids oh i know right as tempting as it might be to orchestrate those perfect play dates you know pick their friends for them wouldn't that be nice oh the dream Uh. but seriously both the child mind institute and mcfinn they emphasize how crucial it is for kids to develop those skills themselves and as parents we're like the coaches you know, on the sidelines, cheering them on, giving them those tools and strategies they need to succeed. Speaking of those tools and strategies, the Child Mind Institute does a great job breaking down some of those common challenges kids might bump into in those early social situations. Like, you know how some kids with ADHD might struggle with impulsivity? Right. Maybe they interrupt a lot or have a hard time waiting their turn. Exactly. Or on the flip side, you might have little one who's more on the shy side, you know, hesitant to jump into a game that's already in full swing. And that's where that one-size-fits-all approach just doesn't cut it. Hmm. Every kid's different. Yeah. Every social situation is different. And that's okay. It's so true. And that actually reminds me of Inky from that McFinn video. Remember him? Poor little guy was dying to join that epic game of blockers and boats. Oh, yeah. But he just couldn't quite figure out how to approach the group. And that's where his buddy Three Tooth swoops in with this brilliant idea, social scripts. They're like magic words or phrases that help kids navigate those tricky social situations. It's like having a little script to follow, especially helpful for those kiddos who might find those unspoken social cues a bit confusing. Exactly. Like the Child Mind Institute gives some awesome examples of simple phrases that can make a world of difference. Like just saying, can I play too? Or that looks like fun can be a total game changer. It's all about giving those kids the words to express themselves and their desire to join in the fun. Right. And they even talk about how to read those subtle cues, you know, like, is everyone smiling? Are they laughing? These little things can help kids gauge if it's a good time to jump in. Because sometimes those nonverbal cues could be tough to decipher, even for us adults sometimes. Hey, tell me about it. But the more practice kids get, the better they become at reading those social situations and responding in a way that feels comfortable and natural. And that's something that the McFinn video really emphasizes the power of practice. Yeah. They actually show Three Tooth Coaching Inky on those little things that can make a big difference. Like making eye contact and smiling when approaching someone. Right. And even introducing himself. It's amazing how such small actions can boost a child's confidence and help them feel more at ease in those social settings. Totally. It's like those little things send a signal that says, hey, I'm friendly and approachable and I want to play with you. Exactly. And you know what I love about both of these resources is that they highlight how these social interactions are not just about making friends, 
They're about developing those essential life skills that'll serve them well in all areas of their lives. So true. Uh, we're talking about communication, empathy, problem solving, you name it. These are skills that go way beyond the playground. Absolutely. Yeah. And the best part is that by focusing on those social skills, we're not just setting them up for success in preschool. Mm -hmm. We're setting them up for success in life. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like learning to ride a bike. You're not going to nail it on the first try. Oh, gosh, no. There will be wobbles. There will be spills. Maybe a few tears along the way. Exactly. Yeah. And the same goes for those social interactions. Not every attempt at joining a game or striking up a conversation is going to be a slam dunk. So true. And you know what? That's okay. It really is. Those little hiccups, those oops moments, those are actually golden opportunities for growth. They're like those mini life lessons in disguise. You know, the ones that teach us resilience and how to bounce back from setbacks. Absolutely. And it's in those moments where we as parents can really shine. You know, we can offer that listening ear, that comforting hug, and help them reframe those failures as opportunities for learning. It's all about teaching them that it's not about being perfect all the time. It's about trying new things, putting yourself out there, and learning from those experiences. And you know what else is important to remember? Not every kid is wired to be the life of the party. So true. We don't want to put those labels on them or have these preconceived notions of how they should be socially. Right. Some kids are naturally more introverted or prefer smaller groups, or maybe they just need a little more time to warm up to new people and situations. And that is 100%. Okay. It is. The Child Mind Institute actually talks about the difference between shyness and introversion. Oh, that's a good point. Because they're not always the same thing, are they? Not at all. Shyness is often rooted in fear or anxiety, whereas introversion is more about how someone naturally recharges and gains energy. So an introverted child might actually really enjoy social interaction, but they might need some downtime afterward to kind of recharge those batteries. Exactly. And I think that's a really important distinction to make mm. because we don't want to try to force our introverted little ones to be someone they are not. Right. We want to honor their unique personalities and help them find ways to connect with others in ways that feel authentic and comfortable for them. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of creating those comfortable and positive social interactions, it reminds me of something else the Child Mind Institute mentioned about playdates. Oh, yeah, those supervised social skills boot camps? Yes. They emphasize how important preparation is for those playdates. Oh, tell me about it. A little planning goes a long way. Right. Before the play date, it's a good idea to chat with your child about what it means to be a good host. Like maybe brainstorming some fun activities they could share with their friend or practicing how to offer a snack. Exactly. And even something as simple as asking their friend, what do you want to play, can go a long way in setting the tone for a positive and engaging interaction. Oh, and let's not forget the cardinal rule of successful play dates. Always have emergency snacks on hand. Yes because nothing derails a play date faster than a case of the hangries. So true. But, you know, beyond the logistics, both of our sources today really stress the importance of focusing on the positive when it comes to these social interactions. Absolutely. Instead of just a generic, good job, try to be specific about what you're praising them for. Like, I loved how you shared your dinosaur with your friend, or you did a great job taking turns on the swings. Exactly. Those specific observations help them understand what they did well and encourage them to repeat those positive behaviors. It's like we're giving them those little gold stars for those social skills we want to see more of. And the beautiful thing is that by focusing on those positive interactions, it creates this upward spiral. Mm -hmm. You know, more positive interactions lead to more confidence, which leads to more willingness to connect and so on. It's like we're building this foundation of positive social experiences that they can then draw on as they continue to grow and navigate those social waters. Exactly. And you know what else those positive interactions do? They help create a sense of belonging and connection. Which is so essential for their overall well-being and development. Absolutely. Yeah. Because when kids feel like they belong, when they feel seen and heard and valued, it does wonders for their self-esteem, their confidence, their overall happiness. So true. It's like we're nurturing those little social butterflies, even if they're still learning to fly. It's like we're giving them a little toolkit for those inevitable moments when those social interactions get a little well bumpy. Exactly. Because let's face it, those bumps are going to happen. Oh, they will. And you know what? Those moments, those little disagreements, those are actually prime learning opportunities, too. Absolutely. Oh. It's like they're getting a crash course in conflict resolution. And as tempting as it is to swoop in and fix everything for them. Oh, I know. The struggle is real. Right. But sometimes the best thing we can do is take a step back and let them try to work it out themselves. It's all about finding that balance. 
right? Between offering support and encouraging their independence. Exactly. And you know what else helps in those moments? Those social scripts we were talking about earlier. <laughs> totally. They can be just as useful for navigating disagreements as they are for making new friends. Uh, right. Like the Child Mind Institute, they give this great example of teaching kids to say something like, I don't like it when you do that, or can we try a different game instead? It's about giving them the words to express their feelings and needs in a healthy, assertive way. Yes. And you know what else I love about this approach? It's not about teaching them to avoid conflict altogether. It's about teaching them how to navigate conflict constructively. Yeah, because conflict is a natural part of life, mm -hmm. right? And learning how to manage it effectively is a school that will serve them well no matter what path they take. So true. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the wonderful world of preschool friendships, remember this. It's a journey, not a destination. So well said. There will be ups and downs, twists and turns along the way. But by equipping our little ones with those essential social skills, those tools for communication, empathy, and problem solving, we're setting them up for a lifetime of meaningful connections. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe they'll even teach us a thing or two about kindness and resilience along the way. Now, wouldn't that be something? To all you right. parents out there navigating the wonderful world of preschool friendships, you've got this. We're all in this together.